For more reaction on the story, I'm joined by attorney Justin Ramages via Skype. Justin, thank you so much for joining us. Now, this sounds like a rather desperate request and plea sent to the North Gauteng High Court. Can we suppose that this is not a surprise if one takes into consideration the sensitive information at hand? Sure. So what concerns me is that the, 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 the matter under investigation concerns the, the SASA issue. But if those, um, if those donations or the, the information disclosed to the court actually contains information which, con which records third-party funding, uh, that becomes problematic. So, so um, from reports, we understand that the public protector hasn't exercised its uh, power in terms of legislation, which we can tell that she's procured this information. But maybe this, it's been a disclosure from a whistleblower, irrespective private information is being disclosed in a court of law, which I'm not sure is particularly relevant for this particular case. But now going by this letter written by the president's lawyers, they claim that the public protector does not state um, that she subpoenaed bank records from Standard Bank. How important is that? That's very important. Um, look, uh, we've had a number of seminal cases in this regard, which, which concerns third party funding of political parties. Um, but this is a bit different because it's his own personal funding for to to obtain the to procure the, uh, the the office of the presidency. Irrespective of that, there's still very important third party information which isn't relevant and should not be disclosed if it was procured illegally. Um, not saying that she has procured it illegally, but if she has, so that that is going to be a problem. Um, do you believe the Protection of Personal Information Act will come into play here, or is it too soon to tell? So, so Poppy at the moment is only only part of it is active. It's not the entire um, piece of legislation that protects data subjects information. What will in, come into play is a decision made in 2008 in the independent newspapers versus Masetla, where uh, sensitive information, well, in this context, in the national security context, was disclosed in a court of law. And the court chose to uh, put it in an enclave of secrecy if we can put it that way until until the matter was decided in front of the court of law so so what we could see is actually the judiciary taking steps to uh protect this information from being ventilated in the public domain uh pending a finding do we have any precedent that's been set in a court of law um when a, a court has been approached to seal sensitive information in this uh, matter. Do we have any precedent to look at to try and deduce which way the court will go um, uh, when considering this request? Sure. So, so there are two seminal cases specifically in this regard, uh, depending how the information is disclosed. Um, as I mentioned, the Constitutional Court in 2008 in the Independent Papers versus uh, then the Minister of National in or the, the Director of national intelligence, uh, Balima Sethla, he disclosed an affidavit which, con which contained state, state secrets. And what the court in that instance did was to uh, block the information from being public ventilated until the issue was decided. So we have a lot, we, not a lot, but we have very clear precedent in this regard. Do you think that could be applied in this matter? Uh, if I was the president's counsel, I would lean on the resources and uh, cases made available to protect that type of information, especially if it moves outside the ambit of what is being considered. While I could understand there are issues, there are two issues, which I understand the one is the Basasa and, and money laundering. Insofar as third party funding doesn't relate to that, that could be a problem. Um, I would have a problem with that being ventilated. And I'm sure the third party funders would also have a, a, a problem with that. I think it could be construed to be a political ploy on one side to, to put in the public domain those people who are supported um, of President Sarov Ramaphosa's office, and there could be retaliation in that regard. Okay, let's leave it there. Thank you so much. Great insight there um, uh, from uh, the attorney, Justin Ramages, giving us some um, legal insight into the story that we've been tracking um, for you involving the public protector and uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa.